I'm Donna Gress, and the topic is prostate, AJCC 8th edition staging. First, we'll look at T, N, M, and prognostic factor categories. The regional lymph nodes. The regional nodes are those of the true pelvis, as you can see by the diagram, the sacral, obturator, hypogastric, iliac, including internal and external and NOS, and pelvic NOS. Note the location, this is very important. These lymph nodes are not surrounding the prostate. So don't be confused and think that regional lymph nodes are always surrounding the organ or tissue you're talking about. The clinical T category, the DRE, the digital rectal exam. This is required for assigning T category. There are no other options. You must have a DRE to assign the clinical T. This is standard of care, so it should be done. It should be performed on the patient. This is actually included in NCCN diagnostic workup guidelines. This determines whether the tumor is inapparent, not palpable, or apparent, palpable. For the DRE, this is used for staging as the prognosis is based on palpable tumors. There is no list of words for the registrar to use that mean palpable. You have to determine this by the description in the chart and the physician notes. Small inapparent tumors found on biopsy do not affect the prognosis, and that's why they're not included in the staging, because AJCC staging is about the patient's prognosis. CTX means the physician did not perform a DRE. CT blank means the registrar does not have the information. Now, the biopsy reports are not used to assign the CT. They do confirm the presence of cancer, but it does not determine the T category. Only palpable tumors determine the patient's prognosis. Now, biopsies of extra prosthetic tissue may be performed, but you still need the DRE information for the CT assignment. The DRE is performed on all patients. It is standard of care. Now for the DRE for extra caps or extension, seminal vesicles should be palpable if potentially involved. It is insensitive for some extra prosthetic extension. Now the MR imaging may identify an area to biopsy, but that imaging is not used for the assignment of the T category. And remember, extra prosthetic biopsies are not random. They are based on the DRE, the grade group, and imaging. So if you see those biopsies taking place, be sure and look for the DRE as that may provide the information you need for the T category. Pathological T category. The T2 category means it is confined to the prostate, and this includes invasion into the prostatic apex and invasion into the prostatic capsule but not beyond. Now the pathologists have explained there is really not a true capsule. It is usually termed extra prostatic extension. The so-called capsule is only laterally and posteriorly. There is no capsule for the anterior, bladder area, or the apex. Now an important concept is that margin positivity and extra prostatic, extra capsule extension are not the same. These observations are separate and you cannot correlate them. You cannot infer one from the other. Now, an incidental finding during prostatectomy for other reasons, such as bladder cancer invading the prostate or other issues, no clinical stage would be assigned because there wasn't a diagnostic workup. This is not CT0. The clinical N category. Physician judgment may be used to assign CN0. This takes into account the T category, the PSA, 
and the grade group. Nomograms indicate the probability of nodal involvement. Imaging is done only if certain criteria are met. You can look at the ACR, the American College of Radiology, appropriateness criteria for imaging recommendations to understand when that will be ordered. You can also look at the NCCN guidelines on staging workup. As a reminder, imaging is not required to assign CN0. The physician judgment based on all the information we just talked about can be used. Pathological N category. The PN category must have microscopic assessment of at least one node in order to assign. If there's no node microscopically assessed, that is PNX. If no nodes are removed with a prostatectomy, you must assign PNX. And if the case is not a T4 or an M1, the stage group cannot be assigned. Clinical M and pathological M categories. It is important to assign the subcategories. Even though the stage group is not affected, it is very critical to have the M1A, M1B, and M1C data. This data may lead to different stage groups in the future. M1C, other sites with or without bone disease. If only one site is proven microscopically, you still assign P. M1C. It is important to indicate there is microscopic evidence of at least one site. Now the M category. Only a physical exam is required to assign CM0. If there are signs or symptoms, then further study would be appropriate. METs may be CM1 or PM1 with the subcategories of A, B, or C. Remember the C M1 or the PM1 is based on the method of assessment. The PSA. The PSA is measured pre-diagnosis, prior to digital rectal exam or biopsy. Any manipulation of the prostate may raise the PSA levels. If the only PSA is after a DRE or biopsy, but measured pre-treatment, you may use those test results because the physician would have known this and would have waited an appropriate amount of time before ordering these tests so that they would be valid. If there are multiple PSA tests, use the last pre-diagnosis test. If the PSA is not available, which is common when it's an incidental finding at the time of surgery, you may not be able to assign the stage groups with that missing PSA. Grade group. The grade group is made up of the Gleason pattern and score assigned to each specimen. There is inherent morphologic heterogeneity of prostate cancer. This means it is normal to have different grades throughout the tumor. The highest Gleason pattern and score should be used to assign the grade group. Grade group is what's used for staging. Caution, the pathologist may not assign the overall highest grade group. The clinical stage grade group is based on the biopsy or the TURP during that stage time frame. The pathological stage grade group may be based on the biopsy, the TURP, or the prostatectomy during that stage time frame. It is the highest grade group used for staging. AJCC prostate stage group uses the highest grade group. Prostate cancer heterogeneous accounting for areas of tumor with different patterns. So remember that it is heterogeneous, which means you could have multiple different patterns within that one tumor. So the biopsy cores all may have different Gleason's patterns and scores and grade groups. The pathologist may not assign the overall highest grade group. The College of American Pathologists CAP requirements 
Each core must be assigned a Gleason score and grade group. The overall case Gleason score and grade group may be assigned, but is not required. So that's very important. The pathologist is not making a mistake. The pathologist is not required to assign that overall case grade group. And the CAP guidelines for case level prostate needle biopsy reporting. It's recorded as the highest grade, composite grade, or global grade. Composite is an aggregate that considers the spatial distribution and overall involvement. There is no consensus by the major pathology groups, ISUP or GUPS, on whether the highest versus the overall grade, which one is right, and so both are acceptable. So be very careful if the pathologist does give you an overall or a one grade group for the entire tumor, you have to look at all of them and make sure whether the pathologist was giving you the highest or whether they were giving you that overall grade. Because what we need for staging is the highest. So I just need to really make you aware of that difference. Stage classification, diagnostic workup, and treatment. Clinical and pathological staging. For clinical staging, the DRE is required to assign the T category. CN0 may be assigned based on physician judgment and nomograms. Imaging is performed based on risk criteria. PSA and grade group are required categories for assigning the stage group. For pathological staging, a total or radical prostatectomy is required. Now, general rules still apply that if you have a microscopic highest T and highest N categories, that may be used to assign the pathological staging. And there are some exceptions in the chapter that a microscopic T3 and the highest N category under certain circumstances may be used. PSA and grade group are required categories for assigning the stage group. Now, there is very rare YP staging. There is no neoadjuvant therapy outside of clinical trials. Lupron is not neoadjuvant therapy and is being given for a very different reason, not as treatment. The criteria for clinical classification, also called pretreatment. Patient undergoing diagnostic workup is what's required. Usually this includes an elevated PSA, DRE, diagnostic biopsy, identified on TURP due to urinary symptoms, and imaging in certain circumstances. And you can see NCCN guidelines or ACR guidelines to understand what imaging would be used and when. An incidental finding during a prostatectomy there is no clinical stage assigned for a case like this. Never assign stage in retrospect. You cannot go back in time. The diagnostic versus treatment. Diagnostic procedures would include biopsies and TURP. Treatment, that would be surgical treatment of the primary site. That only includes total prostatectomy or radical prostatectomy. If a nodal dissection is not done, these surgeries are still considered treatment. Treatment satisfying stage classification. For pathological staging, a total or radical prostatectomy satisfies the criteria. Nodal dissection is not required to qualify for staging. Rarely, a biopsy of the highest T and the highest N can be used to qualify for pathological staging. You must have both categories biopsied, and it is not assigned based on just the highest T category. Post-neoadjuvant therapy staging is not appropriate. There is no neoadjuvant therapy outside of a clinical trial. And if there is neoadjuvant, neoadjuvant 
androgen deprivation therapy, ADT, short-term is usually four to six months of treatment. Neoadjuvant ADT long-term is usually two to three years of treatment. A Lupron shot prior to surgery is not neoadjuvant treatment for staging. This is the rule for staging, not for registry treatment fields. Information and questions on AJCC staging. The timing is everything graphic is available on the AJCC website for free download. It can help you understand the time frame in the arrows along with the criteria, which is in the square boxes. It gives you an overall picture of the different stage classifications and how they relate to each other. The AJCC website can be um, accessed at cancerstaging.org. There is a lot of information available, including an overview, version 9, and cancer staging systems, including the AJCC 8th edition chapter 1, Principles of Cancer Staging, which is available for a free download. There's also cancer staging education, frequently asked questions, and other resources. For the Cancer Forum, this is a great place to find answers to your questions. Please look first to see if your question has already been asked and answered, and if not, you can post it. This does truly provide information for everyone because many people have the same question and everyone can benefit by the Q&A. Um, it also allows for tracking for educational purposes so we can see where education may be needed. This has been developed through generous support from the American Cancer Society, and we thank them for that. I'm Donna Gress, and thank you for your attendance today.